or this. Make sure the mortgage is the only monthly cost that exceeds your giving. Register as an independent and vote your theology, not party ideology. Care for the widow and the orphan by becoming a foster care home. Take a family mission trip, not a family vacation. Don't put more money into your home remodeling than you give to Habitat or to, or to the homeless. Spend time on a regular basis with a friend who doesn't know Jesus. Turn off the Christian radio station and listen to National Public Radio to understand what our culture, not our subculture, is saying. Don't complain about any area of your church unless you're already serving there to help create change. When people gossip with you, ask them if the person they're speaking of would be comfortable with what they're sharing. Anybody writing any of these down? <laughs> View suffering as a gift of grace. Have a conversation with that homeless person who asks you for money. Learn her or his story. Sit in the front pew. <laughs> Let's linger here. <laughs> in the words I remember from playground days, I double dog dare ya. <laughs> December 24th, right here, okay? Engage in an intentional discipline of fasting every week and give the money you'd have spent on food to a ministry that fights hunger. Commit to reading the whole Bible in a year. Tithe your gross income, not adjusted gross income. Or just tithe. Get to know every one of your neighbors. See the neighborhood as your parish, not just the person on either side of your house. Establish a regular pattern of prison visitation. That gets you out of your comfort zone. Like I said, suggestions for living dangerously because jackhammers are dangerous. And yet, you know, you do one or two or three of those things that really struck you, well, you know what you're doing? You are proving to yourself that you've really heard Jesus and Jesus' message because it could be wrapped up in one easy phrase or one easy sentence from Jesus. Mr. Christian, Ms. Christian, tear down this wall. Let me give you an illustration of a young Israeli man who took Jesus' words to heart. He was a young Israeli soldier walking his patrol by himself in Palestinian territory when, out of the blue, he felt a rock hit him in the back. Before he could turn around, there was another one and another one. He whirled around with his rifle ready, and he did not see terrorists. He did not see militia. He saw Palestinian kids, and they had grabbed more rocks, and they were ready to throw more at him. Well, what should he do? He couldn't use his gun. At the same time, he could not allow himself to continue to be attacked. There was this then grace-filled moment of insight when he knew what to do. He shouldered his rifle, and he reached down, and he picked up the rocks that had been thrown to him at him. The kids didn't know what to do, what was happening. And he started to juggle. He juggled. 
they started laughing. And he ended finally with a flourish. And he bowed. And they applauded as he walked away. And you know what you have to do to be able to applaud? You have to drop your rocks, which is what they did. And in that brief moment, there was neither Palestinian nor Israeli. In that brief moment, weapons had been turned into objects of wonder. In that brief moment, a crack appeared in that wall. The only way cracks will appear in the walls that we have will be to appropriate a good portion of that grace-filled, creative spirit of that young Israeli. May you and I have such a portion of that spirit this week. And who knows? Maybe because of what we will be doing this week, someday we'll visit the Holy Land. We'll go to Bethlehem, and we'll be able to see once again what Reverend Phillips Brooks once saw. And we will be able, with integrity, to sing his carol.